Hello everyone, I'm Marina and that's Sacramel School. Have you ever encountered the cases when a client came with a severely damaged nail plate? More often, this can be the case for wider nails. The reasons for this include iron deficiency or mechanical damage. That's exactly the case today. In this video, we will fix and transform the nails. Another amazing transformation. So let's get into it. Let's take a look at my model's nails. I can see there are multiple cuts on the nail plate. She does the manicure herself with her own hands at home, so these are the consequences. The deepest cuts can be seen on the sumps. The nail plate is all deformed and bumpy, but it's not because of the cuts, but due to the fact that the gross point is damaged. If we look at the rest of the nails, we can see a long nail plate, a wide lunula, which suggests that we can perform a deep manicure and put a lot of pressure on this area. I really want to help and make these nails even and beautiful. It will be exciting, so let's start! I want to push the cuticle with a pusher, as it will put unnecessary pressure on the nail plate and cause new bumps. I straight away go with a diamond flame drill bit. It will help me to open up the cuticle. My model has a thin, dry cuticle, so we will do an e-file manicure. I set up the speed 15 to 17,000 RPM and in the forward position I process the left sides. Make sure to lean on with the pinky finger of the working hand. If you don't lean on with the pinky, the drill bit will get too deep into the nail plate, drilling through it. Switching the rotation direction to reverse, the same speed, I process the right sides. My model told me that these bumps have been in her nail plate for a long time, for about 4 to 5 months. And they appeared because she was pressing too hard on the gross point while doing a manicure. When I see such a wide lunula on the nail plate, I know that I can do a deep manicure. There are no subcuticular pockets here and the gel polish will be not under the cuticle but end-to-end -end with it. Once in my practice, there was an interesting story. I would even say a delicate situation. My model had dirt under her nails. Thank God this model doesn't have it, but the text divided into two camps. Some say that it's not within the competence of a nail technician to remove the dirt, while others say it is. I have already expressed my opinion, I don't think there is anything wrong with it. Just clean it. There are different situations when, for example, the dirt can be cleaned even by the client at home, even with soap or a brush. The coloring is just too strong. Write in the comments what you think about it. If we should be cleaning out the dirt. And I wish you all clean nails! Before getting to the cuticle cut, polish it with a sphere drill bit. I will file the free edge and buff the surface. My model's nail bed is long, so I remove it as carefully as I can so as not to damage the hyponychium. In order for the gross points not to rise even higher, move the file towards you, in one direction. And of course, don't make such twisting moves. 
I removed the leftovers of the previous material with the soft side of the file. On a thumb, I buff the surface. Of course, I can't go too deep with it, but matte the surface as much as possible. Growing all the bumps and deformation off the nail pleat, unfortunately, may take more than one month. During this time, you should not do a manicure or do it very carefully, without damaging the growth point once again. To cut the cuticle, I'm using a red diamond sphere drill bit, 0.23 in diameter. Since the client has a thin cuticle, I set the speed 5 to 7000 RPM, forward position, going with forwarding moves, turning the drill bit. Moving on to the coating, applying all the preparatory products, which include an acid-free primer and a thin layer of a base coat. We will use Acrogel for strengthening, because it will not burn as much, for example, as a base coat for gel polish. Besides, the model's nails are too thin, and if you apply the base, even with alignment, there may be liftings on the free edge. Therefore, we will strengthen the nails with Acrogel, so they are strong and even. Dehydrate the nail plate, carefully removing dust. I apply a thin layer of an acid-free primer, without getting on the skin. Apply the base coat in a thin layer. I've chosen a mild acidity base, so that on such thin nails it would not cause a chemical burn. Especially on the ring finger. Can you see how red it is? That means it's too thin. Send it to the lamp to cure for 30 seconds and start strengthening. Put a big drop of Acrogel. For leveling, I'm using a special liquid and my favorite natural brush for acrylic sculpting. I wet the brush just a tiny bit, dry it on a tissue and start spreading the material. Acrogel needs to be well pressed and not just slapped or smeared. I press the material in the cuticle area so that there are no liftings, on the sides, gradually pulling it towards me. I'm building up the missing side walls, right in the areas with lateral onycholysis. On my model's nails, it was caused by her being used to picking those areas, for example when she was stressed out, and now the nails peel off there. We can remove the excess material using an orange stick. I need to warn you here. You should not apply Acrogel in a thin layer. You cannot thin it down to the free edge too much and make it translucent, since it will chip and peel off for sure. The nails shouldn't be too thick, just about 0.5-0.7 mm. Tap in the free edge and with long moves, Spread the material with the side of the brush. I put the brush to the side and check the architecture. If it's uneven somewhere, I can turn the brush and fix it, so that I file less later. By the way, those very bumps that are on the surface of my model's nails in no way can be filed off. I know that many of you do it at home, and thus thinning down the nails even more. Now send it to the lamp to cure for one minute. I strengthen the rest of the nails by the same principle. The index one has a short nail plate, so we need to extend it a little bit. Squeeze the brush well. Don't work with a wet one, so that there are no liftings in the cuticle area. And just like that, without setting the form, 
the nail has become longer and transformed. This layer turns out to be slightly thicker than the base one. Cure in the lamp for one minute. If the client has a burning sensation, inform that they should not sit through it. Dehydrate and file the nails. Shaping them into a soft square. Slightly touch up the surface. The layout was perfect, so I just need to mat it. Buff in the surface. On some nails, the edges got too thick, so I will drill them out with a carbide drill bit with a thin tip. While filing, be careful not to damage the skin and hypernychium under the nail plate. Since the natural nails are drilled out, the coating won't peel off. Dehydrating the nail plate and moving on to the color coating and decor. Applying color not under the cuticle but end to end with it. For design, we will do my favorite stamping. And if you still haven't mastered this technique, I have a very detailed video on my channel, so make sure to check it out. Applying white gel polish, removing the excess, I transfer it to the stamp and print. When the elements I need are on the edge of the plate, I turn it over for easy distribution. Here the most important thing is the speed. Covering all the nails with a glossy top. On the nails, where there was a deformation, you can make a slight alignment. Applying a medium layer of a top coat and turning the hand over for a few seconds. Send to the lamp to cure. For more definition, file the edges with the soft side of the file. So how was the transformation? Did you learn anything? Give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I wish you all success in your work. Bye bye!